Hey everybody, it's Modesta Megan Muguni. Hi, it's Modesta Megan Muguni, and I'm about to go live on master or mix. What are you going to do with your product when you feel as if it's not performing in the market? So if you bear with me, I am setting up on YouTube and we'll get this party started. All right, all right, all right, all right. Please do share this far and wide. If you're an entrepreneur, if you run a nonprofit, you run an organization, and you've got some offerings in the market, and you're wondering how on earth do I know what to do with this? Is it that I've given the wrong product? Let me remove this thing for me. Is it that I put the wrong product in the market? Or do I have the right product? I'm just not placing it right. And how do I know if I'm not placing it right? So as I'm getting my YouTube going, Chrome, work with me. Chrome is not cooperating. Is there anything else I can do? You guys know I was a backup, right? Hey, Umi, welcome. Hi, Anna Maria. Welcome. Second chance attire. That's right. Second chance attire. Welcome to YouTube. So I'm setting up my YouTube, chit chatting um, until then. But yeah, so you may, you may have. Hi, Dana Doris. I see you. You may have had this experience before where things are not working out in your business or you're not profit nonprofit and you're not sure whether to pull the plug and just remove that product from the market because it doesn't seem to be performing or I'm getting my lighting right or you know should you instead maybe look at um, adding on things to your current offering for it to perform better or should you just you know, keep at it and look at what you need to do to tweak. So do you master this product and look at it from every angle to see what it would take for it to perform better? Or should you just say, look, I don't know what is not happening. Is it the market? Is it the product itself? Is it the way we're, you know, we're putting it out? Let me put on something else. And if that does better, then I'll go to market with that one. So when you're going through that thought process before you decide, whether I'm going to continue with this business, I'm going to continue with this product, I'm going to continue with the model that I have, or saying, no, I'm going to mix it up. I cannot put all my eggs on this basket, so to speak. I want to mix it up. I want to have this product, but I also diversify to have several others, just in case I could find there's something else that I don't currently offer performs better. So that's what we're going to talk about today, whether to master to look at every angle of your current offering to see how can I improve it or to mix it with something else just in case maybe by adding on something of value it would do better or maybe you might find that there's something some other product that you have that actually performs a whole lot better than what you're currently trying to take to market so if you have any questions at all well first of all if you've had an experience where you feel stuck with, I have a product, but it's not performing as I want it to, and I don't know whether to ditch it. I mean, some people will even completely ditch their business. I don't know whether to ditch it or to look at how to improve it, and I don't even know where to start to improve it. How you guys like my wild hair today? I don't even know where to start to improve it, or should I mix it up with something else, and hey, maybe in that combination, I'll find a really great offering or an alternative to the market, you know, then I'll have better traction in the market. I'm standing hovering over you guys because I'm trying to get my YouTube on. But it looks like I will be wasting time doing that. And let me make the most of having you here. So thank you for joining me. This is Modesta. From now on, I'll be saying Modesta from Modesta.Africa. Oh, why Modesta? Well, because I want to reposition. Is that what we do? We review how well we're doing and what makes sense. And it makes sense for me to come just as Modesta. For most of you, you know me for me. Um, and you know, even when I have products out there that you're interacting with, you come to me because it is me. If you were someone else offering those products, you probably wouldn't. So this is Modesta from Modesta.Africa. And of course, I still have purpose and Lexus and everything, but I'm just gonna put this forward more than uh, the other at the moment. So now, I shared in brief in the messages that I put out on social media that um, I had a session with one of my mentees and she was sharing her strategic plan in, for the next three years 
and I know for a fact she has this one product that is amazing and for you who are in Tanzania she's Tanzanian and she's operating what she's doing in Tanzania as soon as I mention it you would know it but in her strategy I also saw several other things and I said oh what is this because I didn't know of them and her and I'm her mentor so I would have at some point heard of it so no, no this is not on this one we did a little bit it didn't even really give much returns but you know we got to we got to be out there and she kept on using this language well at least we'll make enough or at least we'll pay the cost for delivering this product at least and i'm like ah oh, man you know non-profit aside you do not go into anything to at least get some mediocre any old results you know just to still stay in the market no we have to evaluate our dis the decisions differently going into 2020 you don't do business simply to say oh wow well, but let people just see me and trust me if you've been doing it for a couple of years and people are coming to you they see you they trust you they know that this is good for them it's time for you to also put in financial indicators to make sure that this business this nonprofit, because it still has to generate income right to run itself makes sense so then i asked i said okay so you want to do these things these other things she wants to mix it up and I asked, why do you want to mix it up? And she says, well, reason why is we're thinking it's going to, you know, give our market something else to also interact with us over. I'm like, okay. And this that you've done, now I mentioned the other products that she was offering as well. How well did they do? She's like, they didn't do you know, well at all. Um, but you know, at least we were able to make, I don't know what, what they made, like some, you know, they were able to pay the cost for delivery. That service is a service. Right. And then I asked about a, a certain um, market strategy. She had, uh, there was a channel she felt was unexploited. And if she went and, and, and pursued that channel, she would reach the people that she wants, or so she thought. And I said, wait a second. And so now I'm going to disclose a little bit. What you're doing is reaching a constituency, a segment, a market segment, that is the beneficiary of your services, but they're not the ones who pay for the service. They benefit from your services, but they're not the ones who pay. And that, that channel, that delivery channel, she wanted to exploit a little bit more was going to get her to speak to the beneficiaries and not necessarily the target that actually goes out of pocket for her services. And so that didn't seem wise. And of course, to go and reach them where they are um, and, and to, to look to engage with, with that client would require even greater resources than they're struggling with now. As far as resource mobilization goes, the only strategy I saw was how to save better so that there is some left over after paying overheads for them to develop other products and to do other things, other activities. And I said, your strategy as far as funding, because her greatest challenge was resource mobilization, was funding. Your funding strategy is to look at better ways of saving internally but you're not even generating anywhere close to even meeting your your costs. Forget about you know saving and investing and, and you know investing back into the business, etc. And so no matter how you turn it, I said you could stand on your head and you still will not come up with the types of you know figures that you're looking at in your savings for this to make business sense for your business you know to run you know she says you know just to at least break even. And I said, so first of all, at least making enough to meet the cost of delivering the pro, you know, the the, um, the service, the offer, is not enough. And it's not enough to say, well, at least to 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 break even. I mean, I'm not saying that you know business don't grow incrementally. Of course they do, but you do not set out with the aim of just to break even for now, especially since you haven't fully exploited, you know, what how you're positioning your product, and so. I saw that not being clear, first of all, of her market. There's a market beneficiary, but then there is a market customer that pays. Her real customer 
when, when you think of it in business sense, is the person that pays. And those that benefit are, you know, are, are others. And so she had been speaking to those that are benefiting, but they were not in a position to persuade, to influence those that pay. And so the first thing is to be very clear, who am I in business with? Who do I want to serve? Who am I approaching? What are their interests? Um, at what price point would they be willing to pay you know, for a service such as this? Where do they congregate? What kind of languaging you know, would, would attract them? What kind of positioning of this product and what kind of you know, uh, sentiment would they form affinity and loyalty with such as to want to consider you know, our business as you know, the business to engage with? And it became clear that they were not looking at the customer, but they were looking at the beneficiary. And even in this new strategy, they were putting more effort in reaching the beneficiary who didn't even have the power to influence the customer, the paying customer. And so that in itself was not going to work out. But secondly, what we notice is that this product was doing extremely well. It's now become a signature product, a flagship product. A lot of people, when they seek them out, even if you know they're dabbling in other areas, when they seek them out, they seek them out for this particular product, which then means it makes sense to do the best that you can to develop this product. And even, you know, I, I gave an example of Fanta. Even if she was to go later on and look at how to diversify and keep the Fanta, you know, the equivalent of her Fanta uh, brand, she can have Fanta lemon, Fanta pineapple, Fanta berry, or whatever other variation of Fanta, the orange Fanta that you have, simply because people so love that product. So I, you know, in, in speaking to her, and of course, we're also looking at the, the facts, you know, numbers don't lie. It was obvious the more effort she was putting to this, when she put more effort to this product, it performed better. As a matter of fact, even as they were talking about reaching out, you know, coming up with another way of reaching the market, what they were currently doing without paying, um, you know, extra money to third party vendors, what they were currently doing on social media was really giving them traction with their customers and not even the beneficiaries alone, actually the customers as well. And so what then seemed to come out as a challenge is she doesn't have a challenge that this product isn't, it doesn't have potential, this product couldn't do well. It's the way she was positioning the product and it was going to be premature for her to want to mix it up with other products, she would actually dilute that brand, which already had such loyalty, which was already, you know, word of mouth was working so well. I mean, she was getting, she is getting partnerships, she's getting sponsorships. Actually, one of the things that she mentioned to me is we've had to subsidize our fee uh, because, you know, times are rough, she was saying. And so we've gone down significantly. I mean, they cut it down to almost 50% what they were charging before. Even if what they were charging in the first place was not meeting their costs at all. So imagine what they were charging per unit for this service was not even meeting their costs. And she had gone down to 50% of the cost because times are rough. And she was looking to go down further. And this is what I pointed out to her. I said, there are people doing business in your very context, similar business that are charging two, three, four, five times what you are charging and offering less value in the market. And so you are considering your customers, which is a great thing to do in business, and you are adjusting your prices according to the times we're in, but there are other people that are maintaining or even increasing their prices and customers are still going to them. And so you need to reevaluate how you are looking at your business and what you're pitching. So for instance, if you feel that, you know what, I need maybe another 12 months of keeping it at, and I would say the original price she was, she was charging, even if it wasn't really meeting her, um, her financial goals for her business, 
keep it at that and then work on the communication, work on the marketing, work on the building affinity and, and rapport and loyalty such that when you increase the prices and you can have add-ons to that product, not have other products, but add on value to that product, your customers who would now be hooked would see why it is justified for you to have that, that, you know, that increased price. Because this is the thing, she was so busy considering meeting, and I'm not even sure if you know, she got feedback saying this price is too much for us, but she was so particular about meeting um, the customer at what they could pay, or so she thought they could pay, that she wasn't at all doing the math to see if it made sense for her business. And so what she found out is in delivering this service, she was able to just screw resources being utilized. Why? Because, you know, she's just thinking, this thing seems to be popular, but it's not making monetary sense. Now imagine to add on strategies, to add other products, which there is a cost to developing them. And to go out to, to, you know, to reach the market, there's a cost associated with physically going to meet the market. It didn't make sense that you're currently running, you have a very good product with great potential, but you haven't so positioned it as to generate the income you need, not just to, 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 you know, to run itself, but to actually contribute as a flagship and really the largest, um, in terms of percentage, um, income generated for your business to then decide to add, to put money, which you don't have, to develop other products and go out to market with these other products. It didn't make sense. And this is something else I asked. I said, what is your rate? What is your consulting? What is your hourly rate? Your time, your value to your organization. What is your rate? And she said, well, I don't have one. You know, we just, we all just give of ourselves. Because I said, that's something else we often make mistakes in. We do not factor in the value of my time developing a product, the value of my time when I show up and I'm, you know, speaking to a customer or I'm delivering the service. You're just thinking, what does it cost of all the things that I had to pay for that service and the money that's coming in, what customers are paying, you know, how do they tally? But the cost of delivering your services, the cost of running your business must factor in each individual in that business and what they're billable. If they were billing, let's say, if you were to work, because this is a nonprofit, but if she were to work like a for-profit and if she were to work like a consultancy, she was not considering her hours as the most senior official of that organization and the other colleagues as well. You know, you can, you can look at that in the market what would you say is the equivalent of my one hour injected in this project and equally the others as well? And she would find out that the cost of, of delivering that product is far higher than she realized. And so she needs to move away from the model that says, this is how much it costs, you know, this is how much it costs to rent a place and to get stationary, blah, 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 and snacks. And this is how much, you know, people are paying. And so I'm breaking even on just delivering this thing. She actually needs to look at the cost including you know uh, you know the human capital cost um including uh you know the transport and all the other resources that they're using and maybe because it's a startup they're using it of their own that they're not factoring in you know it could be their devices and it could be their airtime etc and so my advice was this it looks like this signature product that everybody comes to you for because even without getting you know, insight from her, you know, because I've gone through their documents, I've reviewed the strategy and I reviewed, you know, her concept, even when she was just taking it to market, even without that insider information, just watching her and her organization, what they're doing on social media, I can see this is some, this is something novel. It is new. It is unique. It has traction from when they started to what they're doing right now. It is astounding. And the, uh, the reputation in the market, the goodwill with partners, the sponsorship, her individually to attend all these leadership programs, the, the sponsorship and the partnerships that they're developing right now, it is worthwhile, and I use this word, to milk this signature offering that she has, this flagship product that she has, for all it's worth. And so some of the things that we discussed is to really be clear about who her customer is. 
and I say this to you as well, who is your customer? I have another example of somebody, you know, I had a strategy session with her and she was approaching a certain market segment out of emotion. So she's based in the US and she wanted to speak to Africans in the US because the service that she offered affected minorities the most. And being African of African origin, she really wanted her brothers and sisters to be able to take advantage of the service. And so she was spending a lot of time, which is money, time is money, time is money, time is money, time is money. She was spending a lot of time and resources, you know, approaching them and they would go so far you know sometimes people if you're not interested in something just say i am not interested or this would not work for my family or this you know looks great but not for now our finances don't allow whatever it is stop egging people on on and on and you're in this conversation going on and you have no intention of doing business so she was coming to me talking to me about what is not happening what am i not doing and I said, so who is your customer? And she was giving me the different categories. And I asked her to give me percentages. And I want you to also think about that. If you are offering a business or you know, a service, a product, um, and whether it's for profit or non-profit, I want you to consider who your customer is. If you feel like I have several uh, customers that come to me, well, I want you to look at uh, who is paying the most and not randomly look at it over time when you look at the percentage of the income you're generating which constituency is it coming from the most if it's coming from a certain segment then it makes sense to tailor your entire business model and approach to those that are paying she was tailoring her business to those she wanted to reach from her heart but they were not the ones who were paying. In conversation, she actually found out those that were paying were not minority. They were actually, you know, Caucasian business people. And they were taking this service for their teams, for their employees. So she was investing a lot of effort on individual Africans because she is African and the heart was to make a difference to her brothers and sisters from home. But when she really was honest, she realized that the people who were parting with their money were Caucasians and they were business owners and they were taking this service for their employees. So I said, Mama, I know you love us and I know your heart is really making a difference because this is where you feel the need is. And she says, and honestly, Modesta, I cannot stop. Then I said, okay, then don't stop. But you need to change things a little. You need to have more effort invested in tailoring your business to small businesses, because that's what it was. It was small businesses that were taking up a service for their employees. You know, for their employees, obviously, you're not trying to sound white or black or yellow, any other thing, but you understand now, you're not speaking to individuals, you're speaking to small businesses. So tailor this product to small businesses so that everything around it uh you know how the, what you offer the services that you add to it um how you market it how you price it is such that it would sound compelling and viable for a small business and she did that she's doing that and she's doing well she still has um well I don't actually see her doing much to really speak to her brothers and sisters, what she's doing now, which she didn't do before. She wasn't using social media before. She was mostly really getting conversations, uh, you know, talking to people, going to their houses and, you know, really investing time and effort in reaching individuals. She's now just speaking about the benefits, the lifestyle, uh, the, the potential earning, uh, the long-term investment that comes with this service and she's positioning herself and her family and her clients as a as a lifestyle um, Let's say attraction so that other people would say oh my goodness. What are you doing? I am interested so that you know those who are serious can look for her and with just a little effort with preliminary, you know intake questions She can assess whether a person is serious or not 
because she was busy in her business and invested and she was saying for decades but she was not seeing the returns and right now she's putting the exact effort she needs to make have being very clear on who her customer really is like who is really paying you then speak to them so clarity is really really important and then focus so people say how do you know how far to go with a product and how do you know look i'm going to throw in the towel like let me read the signs let me understand and and, and of course timing is, is key like how much effort have you put in but also to look at okay so i am targeting these people what interests them in this area uh how would they want this service or, or product offered to them um where do they congregate what kind of uh, conversations attract them um, what kind of pricing and, and billing options make sense to them when you also work work out the business model you know so what is the product I'm offering how am I put the, you know how am I pricing it uh, how am I marketing it and give it time give yourself time to do that one of the other things that I said are really um, great to to explore since you have already started attracting partners, why don't you pitch something that actually looks like it would be of mutual benefit to you and your partners? As far as with this, in this case, it was the pricing of the product. So I said, whatever you choose to price, because you feel as if your market is not ready to pay more, which I actually differ, I think they can pay a whole lot more depending on how you position it. But let's say you choose the upper end, the original fee that you'd be charging, even if it's not giving you the returns, you're not breaking even. And you speak to your partners about supplementing the rest. You allow your partners to see the cost it actually takes to deliver this service or to deliver this product to market, which includes your billable hours, you and your team's billable hours and all the resources that you're using and not accounting for simply because oh, they're ours, we just have them and so we're just using them, you know, we're not incurring any extra costs. You are incurring costs. And even as they, you know, as they, as they you know, re reduce in, in value, the more you're using them, you, you are, as they depreciate in value, that is also a cost. And you can look at what it is you're pitching to your partners then, how they can supplement, you know, maybe it is in your, in your, in your partner's interest, which it is, for this social enterprise to have impact with this demographic. And so they want you to do well so that they can see the behavioral, the societal, the economic changes uh, in this demographic group. And so they would supplement the income you otherwise get in this shared, you know, um, this model that you're, you're charging the customer a little bit and you have it subsidized, you know, by a partner. You can have that so that you can continue not only delivering the service, but looking at what else you can add to it and doing well um, for your business. And so the clarity and then the focus on this business so that, you know, you know, she, she can deliver, uh, deliver value, but also not incur losses for, you know, what she wants to deliver. And then I said, measure. Put quantitative and qualitative measures to see how your product is performing. Whether you're asking people, you're looking at your bottom line, that does not lie. Um, to see what needs to be tweaked where. And of course now she's clear about who her customer is, not the, the beneficiaries, but the ones that are partying with money. Then in time, ask yourself what you can add on, whether it is going to be the same product that has complementary services around it, or you will start a parallel program that you see would be of value, but do not lose sight of who your customer is. Do not lose sight of the traction that this product, the signature product, this flat, flagship product currently has in the marketplace. Do not lose sight of the fact that there is loyalty. That means something. Because as soon as she starts to divert her attention to creating other products, and of course with money she doesn't even have, She's also diluting the influence and, 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 and undoing all the great work that she has done to position this product to her niche market. And so until it has established itself and is cemented and you know there is brand loyalty, it's a household product, a household name now, and it is the go-to service 
in its niche, then you can look at what else to do without compromising this. This is what I, was fi I found, and I want to conclude here. This is what I found um, as a founder of several businesses. You make the businesses, yes, but the business was, will also make you. And sometimes, good or bad, your value uh, and your performance is evaluated against how well your businesses are doing. And not to say don't take risks, you know, because something could go belly up and now that kills your reputation. You guys know I'm all about taking risks and I've had a bunch of things go belly up and I'm still going. But it's just to understand if I have something, let me make the most of it. If I have a good thing going, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I shouldn't go and change and undo something that's already doing well. It's just to look at what and at what, at, you know, in what area um, and to what extent should I intervene to strengthen my current product, my current offering. And once I feel very comfortable that that is doing well and I've exhausted the different services and the ways that it can present itself and it can serve its niche market, I could look at something else that will complement that. But as a business person, whether for profit or not, don't be quick to mix things up when you potentially have had people come to you, you as the person, because of this product. Uh, and people take that product because of your competences and your skill sets and your performance elsewhere. If you have a good thing going, pursue it the best that you can. I mean, this could include a recipe on your menu. Don't add too many other things if you've got this thing. There's some places that are just known for that one thing. I am sure McDonald's was McDonald's and was just burgers for a very long time before they started having chicken nuggets and all these other things, you know, aside. It was just about the burgers. Why? Because people only came to them for burgers. They would be surprised to show up and find something else. They love their burgers. They want to see more of the burgers. And so whether they're going to make their burgers layered, they're going to do cheese, they're going to do bacon, they're going to do whatever it is that they choose to do, as long as they stick with the burger, that was going to work well for them. And they did that for a long time before they started introducing other things. And I would urge you, if you're in business, for profit or otherwise, and you're wondering right now, I have this product and this is the thing I'm doing, and I feel as if it may not be performing as well as I would like it to, you really need to think through, do the qualitative quantitative analysis of your business, look at the, you know, the bottom line, look at also how, how the market is receiving it. Look at when you are uh, engaging with this product, how the market is responding vis-a-vis -vis when you're engaging, you know, in contrast, when you're engaging with other products and stick to what is working well for you. So I would recommend highly that you master, first of all, discover what it is that you master, discover what it is that you do so well, that people, even when, before you establish a business, were coming to you for, and package that into an offering and master the delivery of that offer. Because it's one thing to have the competencies and the skill sets and the interests and the gifts and the talents in an area. It's another to offer it as a business. So as you offer it as a business, you will see what really moves people, how they want that product, where they want it, and, you know, how they want to pay for it. Um, whether they want it retail, they want it wholesale, uh, they want it seasonal, you know, get to feel what your customers are really looking for and be very clear who your customers are. It's those that part with their money, not just those who enjoy the benefits, but are not parting with the money because no, nah, that's not happening. Master your product. Position, cement your place in that market niche as best as you can before you choose to diversify and mix it up by adding on other products, completely different lines of business, especially when you're strapped for cash, especially when you're strapped for resources, make the most of what you have and what is doing well now and improve on it before you choose to go out and experiment with other things in the hope that maybe it will generate something, maybe it will do something different. Because you might just be walking away from this cash cow that was really, really going to take care of you if you could take care of it very well. And you're about to go off experimenting with resources you don't even have 
in something you've not done before and you may not even have the aptitude for and your customer is not even showing interest in because this was her situation all right so if you've enjoyed that if there's any place you're doing something and listen you don't have to be an established business big business it could be that something that you're doing from home it could be something that you're doing when you go to the office you supply certain products or you give a certain service and you're thinking i'm not getting the feedback i want i'm not seeing the returns of investment as i as i'd like to uh, what is not happening should i abandon this business entirely should i diversify and bring in other things just to see i don't know maybe i should have all my eggs in one basket what would work well today you know maybe something else will work well tomorrow or should i get an expert to sit with me and look at how to maximize what i currently have and that is doing well that people know me for that people come to me for that people actually part with their money to access should i master this and see how well it will perform in the market with a new approach, with a new strategy, before I count it out. If you're in any one of those scenarios, you're wondering, what should I do? You know, should I throw in the towel, start 2020 with something completely different or just not even get into business at all? Should I add on certain things, maybe people will like them better? Or should I stick with this, but really get insight, get advice on what would make sense to position it differently, to change my model, but still offer the same product. If you'd like to have somebody, you know, to speak with, somebody to strategize with, I recommend, of course I would recommend that you speak with me, but please do reach out. So you can go to modesta.africa and you'll see a tab written work with me, like work with me, Modesta, and go there and you can schedule a discovery call. It is complimentary. The services after that and all, but the discovery call is complimentary for you to tell me what are you going through right now with your business, or maybe you haven't started it, but you're looking to start and you would like to know how best to position so that it is not as painful as many of us who start out things, um, you know, have to go through. Actually, now that I mentioned the word pain, I've written a book called The African Entrepreneur Startup Checklist how to save time, money, and unnecessary pain. I would recommend you get that book on Amazon. The African Entrepreneur's Startup Checklist by Modesta Mahiga Bugoni. You can get that book on Amazon. It also helps you through the thought process, the strategizing before you decide to set up your business so that you make sure you're very clear on what it is that you know, you're good at, you want to offer, who your client really is, what it is you want to offer, how they want to interact, engage, and access your service, and at what price point would make sense for your business for you to offer this product or service to them. So if you want to get the African Entrepreneur Startup Checklist by Modesta Mahiga Mugoni, go to Amazon and you get that book. It's an amazing resource. You will enjoy going through that thought process before you hit 2020 running and for flat on your face. But also, if you're thinking, Modesta, I am at the point right now, I don't know what to do. Should I quit this business? Should I add on other things? Maybe just the product I have is just, is just not going to sell. Or is there a way that I can reposition this product so my business can do better? Please do reach out to me. You can go to modesta.africa and under the tab that says work with me, you know, book your, your discovery call with me. It is completely com complimentary. I'm not charging you for that one. Or you can DM me or send me an email at hello at modesta.africa. That's H-E-L-L-O at modesta.africa. Thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful well, for me <laughs> to spend time with you. And I look forward to hearing from you. If this has spoken to you, please share it with other people. If you think somebody could benefit from our services or even just some of what we, we, we share, a lot of these videos are on YouTube, so go to Purpose and Excellence on YouTube and you will see all these videos, whether it is for business or career, uh, personal development. We've got quite a, quite a lot there and I'm adding more going into 2020 for you to access and run with it by yourself if you'd like to. Thank you again for your time. Have an amazing day, evening, and I'll catch up with you on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. It's Modesta Mahiga Mugoni from Modesta.Africa. Until next time, people, go crush it. There is no reason why you should not. You have what it takes. You just need to find out how. There is always a way. You just need strategy. Keep well. Bye.
and ending it.